Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube. And I'm not really a lifeguard. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> Today is Wednesday, January 12th. And in the never-ending saga of Danielle organizes her stitching space. I did do a tiny bit of stitching last night. But again, I just, I can't leave well enough alone. I can't wait till the chair gets here so I can just be ready. I think, I think, I think, I say that famous last words, right? I think I have it worked out what stand I'm using and what apparatus to hold my fabric. And we're going to talk about that. Okay, so... I'm going to flip you around because I want to show you because I did some more organizing yesterday. Because like I said, I, I just can't leave stuff be. Let me flip you. So I wound up. Remember, this table right here was over there, right? So I moved this table over here and it just clears my desk, thank God. So I'm able to put my candle holder, the calendar... I had, these are my patterns. These were sitting on, see that corner table with the um, candles on there? They were sitting on there. I originally was going to use that as my side table for like threads and or container and all that, but I decided against that. So that's going to be the candle table now. But yeah, so that's there. And you can see I've decided I'm going to use my Lowry stand. Yep, I pulled it out of my closet. And the Lowry, seriously, all I want, I want simple and easy. And that's better, easier said than done, of course. But this truly, I stitched on this last night and it was very nice and enjoyable. I can't get it under the chair like I want to. I will be able to when the new chair comes. So here is the little bit of progress I made. Teeny tiny. Um, but you can see, so this is an 11 by 11 Q snap. I have the corner clamp for the Lowry, which is fantastic. And we'll talk about score rods and Q snaps in a second, though, because I'm going to flip around. So over here, this is where I put my iPad when I'm watching, when I'm stitching, because I'm watching something, right? Then I have my highlighter and scissors. And now this is where I have a couple of these clipboards, so I stacked them up to kind of make a desk. There's my Raycon earbuds, the ore container, and then my two colors for this. But I ordered a snap tray that is actually a leather snap tray that's um, personalized. It's going to have my name in it. So I'll be able to put the threads and all that stuff in there and just have the tray there. So that's coming. And I know I have other snap trays because someone got me one. I can't find it. It's somewhere around here. I have so much stuff. So what I decided about this stand is that it's going to be used for tutorials and demos like I used it yesterday when I did you know crossing every 10th x in the line this works great for that so because I can clip my you know phone mount thing to it yeah so demos tutorials so this is where this one's going to stay and then that's like my project basket now you're probably wondering where's your other cart I have another cart like this so let's come out here because I'm going to show you. I had to wheel it out here and it's right there. That's where I have my fabric and some books up top. And yeah, that's where that's staying because there's only so much room, right? So I did finish um, Seven Dirty Secrets this morning and I really liked it. Let's flip you back around. And I really liked it. And so next, I'm going to read the next um, Dork Diaries book, which is number three. So I will start that today at some point. Like I said, I'm off work today. I think I'm probably going to be off work all week because she's just not concerned with us getting work today and taking a break from the arbitration. So let's talk about, because I know you guys probably think I've lost the plot here, right? Because yesterday I was like, I'm going to use the handy clamp scroll rods because I like seeing the whole fabric. Let me tell you, that is the crux of the matter as far as what you get to hold your fabric. First of all, tautness. 
I like tautness of a Q-snap because it is for me, I can get it drum tight. Scroll rods, I feel like they start off tight, but they become loose as you're going through the fabric and you're making, you know, microcosmal, that's not even a word. You're making tiny, tiny pulls every time you pull your needle through the fabric. So, and, but that too, but also the bigger, the bigger issue for me is how to handle excess fabric when you're stitching on something that doesn't just fit in the Q-snap. So, and my, um, the ink circles piece fits right in an 11 by 11 Q-snap, no problem. But the fruit of plenty sampler, no. So I even ordered, now that's an 11 by 11 Q-snap and you can see I have the fabric held with needle minders and like a hair clip. It really is about finding your own way of handling that where you are comfortable with it. Everyone does it different. And I say that because there was a group that I joined today on Facebook that you can't find it if you search for it, it's private. It's called Cross Stitch Stands and Frames, I think. I will link it in the description box below because boy was that a wealth of information. I spent like an hour this morning when I got up looking at all of the posts in there because people will post what's the best stand, people will give advice, they will show pictures of their workstation. I'm interested in all of that. Which led me to YouTube and to watching a couple of different videos on how people handle an excess amount of fabric. I'm always willing to learn. So as I watch those and if I want to impart that knowledge to you, I will let you know because I'm always looking, like I said, and this again comes back to what I said at the beginning of the year. Remember, we all feel alive when we're facing a challenge. This is a challenge to get this all proper and set up. But also, I will give some little tips and tricks on, once I get the chair and I can like show that too, I'll give some tips and tricks on using your Lowry to your best advantage because there are a couple of things that I've done, I feel like, that make it easier to work on the Lowry. Some people love that stand, some people hate it. So I really, because I spent almost $300 on the chair, I'm really trying to not buy any more stuff for my office for the cross stitch. I've got enough stuff. So I'm trying to really use what I have. Again, easier said than done. So I think I ha almost have it perfected. I'm waiting for one more little thing. And then um, I'm pretty sure I got it down pat. So last night when I was stitching, I finished watching the Harlan Coben series, Stay Close on Netflix. So good. If you have not watched it and you like suspense stuff, highly recommend. Um, the person that was behind it all, I did not suspect. So that was a nice little surprise. But there was my mouth falling open at the very, very end, like the last 30 seconds, minute. There is like another little twist and you're like, OMG. Yeah, so good. So I enjoyed that whole series very, very much. So now finding something else to watch because I'm going to start watching Squid Game, but I have to pay attention to it. So I can't be stitching when I'm doing it. Okay. I did get some stuff in the mail and luckily I checked my mail before I started. Rec this day really got away from me. I mean, it's three o'clock right now when I'm filming this. So yeah, this day really, really got away from me with recording and because once I start like finagling and fooling with stuff, piddling, like, you know, puttering around, like just fooling with, is this going to look good here? Let me see if this looks good. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I bought my husband and I didn't realize it was going to stick to this. I bought my husband something for the boat. Oh God. Let me. Okay. Um, I, this was on an Instagram ad, I want to say, or a Facebook ad, and I bought this for his boat. So this is Toadfish, the Anchor Non-Tipping Cup Holder. Um, if this sticks to anything, and it sticks like nobody's business, because, and then your cup fits in here, and it, it fits his cups. He uses the, like the big souvenir cups from Mission Barbecue. 
And now there, the video that they showed, I forget how much this was. I'll, I'll try to link it down below, but yeah, it's called Toadfish, the anchor. They showed a video where someone had this like on their console and the boat looked like it was going fast and this didn't move. Someone even had it stuck to the side. I don't know how you're holding a drink that way, but yeah, it was fascinating. And so I think he'll really like this. Um, I'm glad that it fits his cup because I went out there immediately and tried that. And I thought if it doesn't fit that cup, it's not going to do him any good. So yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to turn it upside down because it does stick. Holy hell. Okay. And then I got an order from one, two, three stitch and I know it's patterns. I don't remember though. I think it's, um, Caroline Manning designs. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a couple of things. Okay. So I finally broke down and bought the Cottage Garden Samplings, the Fox, because I've actually seen this done. It's so gorgeous. Like, how have I not had that pattern, right? And I hope, I feel like I need to look. I don't think I own this. I don't know if somebody bought it for me or not. I didn't think I owned it. I hope I don't. Isn't it gorgeous though? And then um, Sue Carolyn Manning Designs Patterns, Bohemian Bliss, which the colors in this are so utterly gorgeous, aren't they? Uh, this is one that I wish she would have done four smaller ones on. I mean, look at all of those colors. And it really isn't, it's usually like 13 colors. I really want to try to convert one to sulky. And then I also got Birdsong, which this one is gorgeous too. Um, I'm a collector now of these patterns for sure. Okay. And then I got a lovely box from Judy McIntyre. I haven't looked in it because I opened this stuff on camera for you guys, but here looks like a felt envelope that she made because it's like got a Velcro enclosure fancy and there's a letter inside it says danielle i love to go to the thrift store found the shirt and thought of you wear it next year if you can if you can find it what lol oh <laughs> if i can find it next year some old some new have a good year and keep up the great work love judy judy thank you so much i love going to thrift stores too and i really haven't in a really long time um, what is this though? What is that? Is that just like a little cloth for a table? It's really pretty. Look at that. Like for a little side table or like my, um, you know where this would look good on? And I'll probably put it out there. My, um, little laptop tray that I have out there for my, um, diamond painting stuff. That's really cute. Okay. Then, ooh, a little foxy. This looks like it would be for jewelry or rings or something. Actually, this is going to go on my dresser up here because I'm always, when I take a shower, I take my rings off only because I don't want to gunk them up with shampoo and conditioner and stuff. This would be perfect to set those on. I don't even have one of those, so thank you. A diamond painting pen that's an actual pen. This feels really light. It looks like it would be heavy. I actually really love that because someone else got me one like that. Put that right in my pen holder. Okay, this feels heavy. Ooh! It's a candle. It's an... It's an Easter candle with a bunny. Look at that. Because see, it's like Easter eggs. That's so cool. You can find some really cool stuff at, um, I'm going to show you the shirt last because I kind of see what it, what it is. Oh my God. This is called the Candle Cafe. Let's see what this smells like. 
it smells like a cup of coffee. I will definitely be burning this. This will go on my little candle table I have over there. Look at that. It looks like a cup of coffee, right? Oh my God, I can't. Okay, there's actually the shirt, but then there's a two-year pocket planner. Awesome. And it's current, like it's for the year 20, it's August 2021 through December of 2023. So thank you so much. I love that. I can always use stuff like that. And then finally is the shirt. Let me look at it first. <laughs> yes, let's go. Let me move the candle so I can show you. It's Starbucks logo. And it says Mary and Bright. I absolutely love this. Thank you so much. So next year at Christmas time, because look, she's got a Christmas hat on. Mary and Bright. And I normally don't wear short sleeves during the winter. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some of the, you know, the long sleeve shirts like people that wear scrubs wear underneath. I'm going to buy some of those. I know they have those on Amazon. I love this so much. Thank you so much, Judy, for all of that. Love all of those little gifties. Such awesome stuff. The shirt and the candle, I think, are my favorite. The coffee candle, if I had to pick. Oh, and then this, too. Yeah, this stuff will get put to good use. Okay. So today's inspirational story is the story of the mango tree. A long time ago, there was a huge mango tree. A little boy loved to come and play around it every day. He climbed to the treetop, ate the mangoes, took a nap under its shade. I love mango. It is probably my favorite fruit. It's really hard to find it in season. You know what I mean? Like ripe. So he loved the tree and the tree loved to play with him. Time went by and the little boy had grown up and he no longer played around the tree every day. One day, the boy came back to the tree and he looked sad. The tree asked the boy, come and play with me. Now, we know the trees are not talking, but there, there's, a, there's a moral behind this, right? So the boy replies, I am no longer a kid. I do not play around trees anymore. I want toys. I need money to buy them. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, but I do not. So the tree says, sorry, but I do not have money but you can pick all of my fruit and sell them so you will have money. So the boy was excited. He grabbed all the mangoes on the tree and left happily. The boy never came back after he picked the fruit. The tree was sad. One day the boy returned and the tree was so excited. The tree says, come and play with me. And the boy says, I do not have time for, to play. I have to work for my family. We need a house for shelter. Can you help me? Um, the tree says, sorry, I do not have a house, but you can chop off my branches to build your house. So the boy cut off all the branches of the tree and left happily. The tree was glad to see him happy, but the boy never came back since then. And the tree was again lonely and sad. One hot summer day, the boy returned and the tree was delighted. The tree says, come and play with me. I am sad and getting old. I want to go sailing to relax myself. Can you give me a boat? Use my trunk to build your boat. Okay, I read that wrong. The tree said, come and play with me. And the boy says, I am sad and getting old. I want to go sailing to relax myself. Can you give me a boat? Why is he asking the tree for a boat? So the tree says, use my trunk to build your boat. You can sail far away and happy. So the boy cut the tree trunk to make a boat. He went sailing and never showed up for a long time. Finally, the boy returned after leaving for so many years and the tree says, sorry, my boy, but I do not have anything for you anymore. No more mangoes for you. And the boy replied, I do not have teeth to bite. And the tree says, no more trunk for you to climb on. And the boy said, I'm too old for that now anyway. And the tree said, I really cannot give you anything. The only thing left is my dying roots. And the boy said, I do not need much now, just a place to rest. I am tired after all of these years. 
The boy replied, good, old tree root is the best place to lean on and rest. Come, come sit down with me and rest. And the boy sat down and the tree was glad and smiled with tears. What is the moral of this story? I'm curious, what is the moral of this story? This is a story of everyone. The tree symbolizes our parents. When we are young, we love to play with our mother and father, but when we grow up, we leave them, only coming to them when we need something or when we are in trouble. No matter what, parents will always be there and give everything they can to make you happy. You may think the boy is cruel to the tree, but that is how all of us are treating our parents at times. Wow, that is a heartbreaking eye-opener. Wow. But true. Um, wow. Makes me want to call my mom and just say, how are you doing, right? Um, I'll be honest. I, you know, growing up, we didn't get very many things and we surely didn't ask for things. Um, and then when I became an adult, there were times that my mom um, lent me money. And, and I say lend because my family is of the mindset that I lend you money, you pay me back. I treated them just like a regular bill um, because if you didn't, then you weren't getting any more money. And it really, I only asked to borrow money, I think from my mom twice, literally. Um, I needed dental work done and I didn't have the money. So, I mean, when I, when I felt like it was a true emergency, I had an abscess tooth, I had to get a crown, I had no way to pay for it. So I didn't just go ask for money because I was irresponsible and I couldn't like pay my rent or something like that. Um, some may think it was irresponsible that I couldn't afford my own dental work, but all of my paycheck went to my apartment rent and my car payment and things like that. Anyway. And then when I moved back here from Hagerstown, um, my dad did help me. He helped me move and he actually bought me a bed. Um, but it wasn't like I came forward and asked for all of that stuff. Do you know what I mean? I rarely ask my parents for things. I feel like once you're an adult, you should be able to take care of your own stuff unless something, unless it's an emergency or something major happens. Um, and every time, my mom asked me to do something regarding my grandparents. I did it. Um, I took off work the one day to go over there and, and sit with my grandfather while my grandmother had a doctor appointment, you know, helped her clean out the house. I, I did all of that stuff because that is what you do, right? So yeah, every single thing she has ever asked me, I, I can't, I've never told her no. I've, I've always just gone and done that because, you know, here, here's a good thing too. Someone commented on my video when I was telling the story about my stepfather punishing me for sitting in the chair reading and they were like where was your mother why didn't she put a stop to it um you can best believe that she fought with him a lot of the time about um how he treated us and you know being an adult now and being able to sit down and discuss with her like why didn't you leave you know well why she didn't leave two young kids two kids and she just, I think she felt hopeless. I think she just felt like she didn't know where to go or what to do. And she could have went to my grandparents, but I just feel like she would have thought she was a failure if she did that, right? Because she actually did try to leave when I was in eighth grade. We went to my grandparents and stayed a couple days and my stepfather cried and pleaded and begged and we went back. And his behavior was different for a little bit but it didn't take long before it was right back to what it was. And then it only took her, well, another four years, five years. Um, but, you know, I've never been in that situation, so I can't try to say that I would, you know, have up and left. Um, but, yeah, I, I've made peace with my mother with that, right? Um, with her role in that. Um, because there were many times that, you know, she'd be fighting with him and then he wouldn't talk to her for three days or something like that. And, um, it just, so she was abused too. It wasn't just us, you know, but, um, yeah, just, just a horrible situation. Um, I don't blame her is, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but okay. 
So how are we today going to work our way to unfucking ourselves for 2022? All right, this is a long one. Okay, you are always winning. Even when you are apparently losing, it's a win for the cycle of BS. You don't just have to overcome life or the immediacy of your concerns. You have to overcome yourself and not your best self, but rather your worst, most negative, most cynical self. Yes. And you know, I like the saying, wherever you go, there you are, because People, there are lots of people that think, oh, if I had a different house, oh, if I had a different car, oh, if I had a different job, you're taking yourself with all of those things. So I feel like, you know, you need to get yourself in order, right? Because it's all about your perspective. Your whole life is about your perspective of things. So I hope you guys all have a great Wednesday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.